Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. Oh, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hello, yeah, hello. come on, you can talk. Come on, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad to have you here this morning. And uh, we're, we're going to be talking about a lot of things that have to do with being joyful. And so I want you to realize that this, each, each one of you has, each one of you has the ability to have fun. How many of you have forgotten how to have fun in your life? Yeah. If you, if you, if you ever forget how to have, have fun, just take a moment and center yourself. So we're going to get people seated. That's okay. She doesn't have to listen to me. I don't. <laughs> okay. Before I bring, before I begin. We, are, we have exercises every Sunday morning starting at quarter till, uh, directed by Chris and assisted by his wife, Rebecca. Uh, and we're so glad to have you here. And uh, the exercise is to wake you up so you become aware that you're receiving spiritual energy. Many times I have people saying, well, I don't know how to get in touch with spirit. Open up, wake up, awaken your body the sensors that you have, awaken that essence of who you truly are. Waken it up and then allow spirit to fall in. So that's what Chris is doing for us every Sunday morning. Hey Chris, thank you. Us awake. And uh, Dr. Eileen, I was going to have you lead the opening uh, prayer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm doing a good job. Right, go ahead, she said. <laughs> so, uh, there has been so many things going on in the world. I just found out about the fire that we had. That, uh, Ed was telling me about the fire. Where was that, Ed? South San Jose. South San Jose, and that was the Home Depot. Right by the, uh, the mall up there. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that how horrible it was. So I want you, and when you're thinking about, we are very good at praying for people over there and sometimes forget we need to also pray for people here and most of all importantly we need to pray, pray for ourselves uh, so when you say to somebody i'll pray for you don't say just i'll pray for you let them know that you're praying for yourself too because quite often we go all through the day without thinking about thanking creator for being here thank creator for the good things we start worrying about the bad things so I want you to, as you're thinking about that, when you bless somebody, keep part of that blessing to remind yourself that you are worthy of being blessed. And now I'm going to introduce our wonderful, our wonderful Dr. Eileen. And because uh, I want her to tell us if she's going to be here next week or if she'll be on her way to New York. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wonderful Reverend Dr. Eileen. Yay! Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I need mean, help over your chair. Oh. Chair. Well, my chairs are going to move over just a bit. So, yeah. Or you move you over, and there uh, we go. Yeah. Well, then we have to move all the cameras. And oh, oh, okay. I, I, I'm, believe it or not, it's easier to move you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And I would like to thank everyone for their warm wishes and their support. Um, I leave, I actually leave a week from tomorrow at O dark 30 in the morning. So unfortunately my Sunday is packed with packing and I have to drop my car off to be repaired and, and all kinds of stuff. So I won't be here next week, but I will definitely be here as soon as I get back to tell you all about my adventures and you know, what it's like to be off Broadway. Yay! For those of you who don't know, I was asked to audition for a lead role in an off-Broadway play, 
and I was accepted for it. So I would be spending three weeks in New York City and um, getting all kinds of experiences like riding a subway (laughs) and and finding out what is wrong with Jersey. So so, um, it is exciting. It has been crazy. I also want to thank everyone for your support on the passing of my dear beloved cat Luna oh. and um, it was this is the first time I've been without a pet since 1991 wow. and the house you know cats don't make a whole lot of noise usually but it just feels so much quieter and I know that that when her time came Sam was there, my dog, who was her best friend who passed earlier, that he was there to show her the way home. And I also know I'm going to see her again. And, you know, and it is, as, as Dottie said, it's about remembering that there's a lot we have. There's a lot we have that's weighing on us. There's a lot we have that, you know, whenever anything changes your life significantly, even if it's a good thing, it's stressful. And when stressful things happen, there's a grief process that goes with it. And that that's okay. It's okay not to be okay. And it's also okay to find joy and humor in the world around you because, you know, even in our darkest times, there's always those little things that strike us as funny. So it's about tapping into that and the gratitude of knowing that there's always someone there with us in our happiest moments, in our most easygoing moments and in our most stressful moments. So everyone take a nice deep breath in. And as you let it out, let anything weighing on your body, your mind, or your spirit to just fall into a little imaginary basket next to you because that's your care basket. Because in this place and at this time, you don't need to hold on to it. And feel free if you're done with it, if you've learned everything that you need to learn from it, feel free to leave it behind when you go. Creator, thank you for the blessing of this day and thank you for our lives. Thank you for all the blessings you give in each and every moment and with each and every breath. Thank you for the blessing of family, friends, community, of faith, of spirit, of connection. Creator, thank you for those things that bring us joy just when we need it most. And Creator, thank you for those hard times because we know that it takes a lot of pressure to make a diamond and that you see that diamond within us. Thank you for no matter where your will takes us, your grace will always be with us and protect us and sustain us. Creator, thank you for reminding us each and every day that there are miracles in the world, that no matter how bad things may seem, that there's always that flower that grows up through the crack in the sidewalk, even when no one notices it. Creator, we thank you for bringing the people into our lives just when we need them most. And thank you for the fact that we know you're guiding them as well. Creator, thank you for giving us one another. Thank you for loving us to a level that we cannot even comprehend, and yet you teach us to love one another even when it's hard. And Creator, thank you for teaching us to love ourselves by always accepting us exactly as we are. Creator, thank you for the blessing of those who have passed, those who have moved on, those who are with you. And we thank you for taking care of them and for holding them and for that great big hug you gave them when they got there whether they walk on two legs or four, whether they swim or fly, we know that every spirit is valuable to you. Creator, thank you for the blessing of one another. Thank you and please bless every being who has ever prayed to you, every being on every prayer list, every being for whom a prayer has been uttered or thought, every being who has asked for prayer, every being who has no one to pray for them, and every being who does not even know to pray for themselves. Creator, we are so blessed that you treat each and every one of us as if we are your favorite child, because to you we are. Thank you for having more love than we could ever be able to encompass. 
thank you for even the smallest and most tiny aspect of this world never leaving your attention. And thank you for the fact that no matter how hard it is, there is not a single moment that you've left us alone. Creator, thank you. And whatever it means to you, we hope you have a wonderful day. For all your creation to the next seven generations and beyond, Aho Matako is seen. Ago, ago, ago. By earth, sea, and sky. Namaste. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Blessed be. And amen. Amen. Today, we have a day that we have to say goodbye to somebody. I'm going to cry because it, it tears up me that we're going to. But Sean, could you come up here, please, and bring the guitar? Is it all, it's already up here. You're so clever. I didn't even see it. Uh, and what would you like to just play for us that says, we love you? Oh. I love you. You love me. <laughs> Whatever it is that you want to play that just represents who you are hmm. and all the love and kindness and care that you've been given us all these years. Well, hmm. Uh, I can keep talking till you have something. <laughs> well, so you know, you know. Um, so I always uh, <clears throat> wake up in the morning and I see whatever my guitar wants me to play, um, just in case Janet doesn't show up. <laughs> you know, it's always good to have a song in your back pocket, but it's never anything that I've written. It's always just something that comes up that morning. It's, uh, that's more how I flow. So, uh, so this is what came out today. And um, so I'm gonna miss y'all. I'm gonna miss you. And I, I have to run today too. I can't even hang out because um, one of my best friends died on Thursday, and uh, we're getting together today to uh, hold a memorial sweat lodge. Um, so it's weighing really heavily on me. And um, today's also my dad's birthday, who crossed over in 2001. And the friend who just died is kind of like my replacement dad. The guy who, uh, who got sober when my dad couldn't. So it's a really weird day for me today. A lot of, feels like a lot of endings. So I guess that's what I'm playing about. It's kind of like a, kind of like endings, I guess. You know, the thing that was really special about my friend, and we don't say his name in the Lakota tradition because you actually want the spirit to not be attached to anything that was connected to them or they were connected to them or what they were connected to when they were alive. And But whenever somebody would cross over, he would pray for them. You know, in a Tibetan Buddhist tradition, you pray for somebody for 49 days and nights. So a priest will come out to a village to ensure that the person who's crossed over will not be attracted back to the things that they had, the people that they were connected to when they were alive. So they'll remember that there's a possibility of redemption or a possibility of escaping the wheel of bardo that and the cycle of death and rebirth. So my friend would pray for people. You could give him any name, it didn't matter. 
uh, whether he knew them or not, and he would pray for them for all those days in a very specific way, if you're ever interested in checking it out. Um, he would uh, do a, a system written by E.J. Gold from the American Book of the Dead. So if you're curious about what that process looks like. But, you know, praying for the, the release of suffering, praying for the transition of every soul. And that's the kind of person he was. His spirit name is Laughing Turtle. Okay? If that gives you any indication of what kind of person he was. <laughs> he had the most wicked sense of humor of anybody I've ever met. And was brilliant. Like, brilliant in the kind of, like, Aldous Huxley way. So, um... Anyway, um... You might consider that, um... For the, uh, The release of all sentient beings. You know, whenever somebody crosses over, consider that holding on to them is not really helping them, but acknowledging all of the good in that person and how beautiful they are and staying in joy for them is probably the, the best thing that you can do uh, to help them remember their divinity. space. It's quite an illusion. There is no now. There's no later. There's only what is in your mind, in your memory, in your heart. So take a moment for all those people that have touched your life and send them joy and love and know that they're in the most sacred place that they could ever possibly be, which is called life. Life takes many forms, whether that's in a body, whether that's in an etheric field, whether that's in a thought, whether that's in your heart. It's all happening. It's all happening. Whether it's now or later or then, it's all happening. Yeah, we'll be back. Until we meet again. Exactly. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John was going to accompany our meditation, and it dawned on me he had a lot more to say than just being an accompaniment. So thank you so very much for those words. They were beautiful. Yes, they were. We have we have guests today. Uh, we have wonderful Reverend Mary Gary, Reverend Tom Gary of the CIC. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having you here. And thank you, Lauren, for being back from your from your travels. So we so <laughs> appreciate that. And uh, it's so nice to see people here this morning. Thank you so very much. And if anybody have any announcements they would like to make? You're all good? Hey, I, I really like that. That's a good oh, to be. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. I'm going to tell people that, that Mary's going to be taking pictures. Mary? Okay, Mary Mary is going to be taking pictures. If you don't want your picture taken, there's a standard signal. You know what that is? <laughs> Just put your hand up and she won't take your picture. If you don't mind your picture taken, what we're trying to do is let people know by pictures of people that our center here is diverse. It's easy to say we accept everybody, and that if it don't show anybody, don't show people who are older and younger, people who are black or white, people who are Asian. We don't show that anywhere that people can believe it. We show a stock photograph. So now we're showing you real life people here, and we're so <laughs> glad you're here. Well, it's you not that, that, that the picture on the website that has all the hands, that's all hands of... of the, yeah, on, on, on our here. website and on our... Uh, so many things that we have in all the hands, those are all hands of people. If you uh, have been here for long enough, you can say, oh, that hand belongs to so-and-so, that hand belongs to so-and-so. No, that's Ronnie's hand, or that's Scotty's <laughs> hand, or whatever. But we just, we so enjoy having new people come in and find out what is the story of Center for Creative Living. And the story is that I wanted to do when I became a minister to have a church that was so acceptant of everybody, wherever they were in life. Whether you've been a drinker or a smoker or a, a, what is the other word? You know that song was on the radio as I was coming <laughs> 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 what is that, Jackson Brown? Well, whatever it is. And you'll hear people in our group saying, well, when I used to be a, or when I was, and it might be when I used to be a Catholic, or it might be when I used to be doing drugs. I used to. <laughs> we love you, whether you're still doing it or used to. Whoever you are, you're certainly welcome here. I'm going to be talking about whatever happened to the fool today. Because April and Fool's Day came and went. Yep. <laughs> Nobody said anything. Nobody pulled a prank. I didn't even see much about it on TV. Yes, Sherry. Actually, Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel switched oh, shows for the night. <laughs> oh, really? I'm so glad. And because the reason I like it is because it's supposed to be the most lighthearted day of the year. It's supposed to be when, when you can have fun. And we need that right now. You turn on the TV, you listen to people talk, and it's all about what's wrong with the world, what's bad with the world. It, it, and it's like we get, that's where we get a, to identify ourselves with what's wrong with us, not what's right with us. And every one of you has a lot right with you because you made it here today. Yay! So we're going to say, hey, look at how wonderful it is that you were able to get up, get dressed, I don't even think that's a qualification to come here. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who don't know, I spent a time in, uh, when I was in my uh, younger years in a nudist colony. So when I said, you know, this isn't a qualification, it's not necessarily. But anyway, uh, but we want to change the, the energy on the planet. And we can't, if we keep adding to the whole, if life is bad, life is no good, oh, we're scared, you know, like all these negativities, when all you have to do is start thinking positive thoughts. And there, there again, I keep using the rain, but you should think one positive thought, and then pretty soon another one follows it, and then another one, and pretty soon you find you're smiling, or you're laughing, or you're excited about life. And that's all it takes. So anytime you want to lay in bed for the rest of the day, think a positive thought. Think a thought of 
you know, I could go in and look what's in the refrigerator. I don't care if it's your refrigerator, you still go in. <laughs> Hopefully the elves came in the middle of the night and left something. Like, but whatever you want to do. Something that makes you connected to source. Something that says creator is there and creator is helping me with anything I want. But when I get depressed, creator doesn't know what to do with me. Think about it. When you have a small child and they start crying and they've been fed, they've been bathed, they've been burped if they're young enough to that age, whatever it is, and you look at them and you go, you feel helpless as a parent, don't you? I don't know what to do. This, this child is in distress, what do I do? Well, it's the same way the Creator is. The Creator sees us and says, that is one of my children's in distress. And I don't know what they need right now because they're not asking. Ask people, if you're not happy, ask somebody that laughs a lot to join you. Call people and talk to them. I received a very strange phone call yesterday. And when I say strange, no, it's right up there. Yeah. The gentleman <laughs> called me and he was a client of mine 10 years ago. And I'm the only name he can remember. And he's in assisted living in Arizona and can't remember who he is, where he is, or why. He remembers my name and his name. And your phone number. And my phone number. My old phone number. And I said, well, do you have any parents? He said, I think my mom died. He said, what about your wife? I, she divorced me. What about your daughter? She hates me. What about your brothers? They don't want anything to do with me. And I said, what about you? And he said, I don't like me. Oh. And all of a sudden I realized that I needed to bring God into this. I need to bring somebody else into this equation. So I said, let's talk about music. And he said, they won't let me have my keyboard in here. Mm. And this is a gentleman who has uh, written many, many songs. And to be holding on to that thread, can you tell that I was, this is just a thread I have. And so I said, I am going to call your institution there and say, I'm your reverend, and what can I do to help? And he said, they won't talk to you. And I said, they'll talk to me. Have you ever not been able to talk to Dottie Moon? He said, no, that's the only reason I remember your name, because you always yelled at me. <laughs> well, good. And, but my heart is just going, you know, kaplunk, kaplunk for this poor man. And finally I thought, no, we're going to pray. We're going to start putting the energy in. And when I did, you know what happened? He's called four times in the last six hours because he can't remember he called before. Twice this morning. Twice this morning, yeah. And so, okay, we're going to get him some help. Even if that just means that somebody there, he's in Arizona, it means if somebody there can talk to him, okay? But I look at the work that we do as God-fearing, God-fearing people. And you never know when you're going to be used. And the only reason I bring that up is if when you have an opportunity to help somebody, no matter what they're doing, no matter where they're going, take that opportunity. I'm feeling better about helping him than I have for helping somebody in a long time. So in my helping him, I help me. Every time you reach out and help somebody, you help yourself. So think about that. And I want to go to, back to why April 1st is the most important holiday, I guess, as far as I can see. Because all cultures have had a type of some kind of fool's day, some kind of holiday where you celebrate. And, you know, they, they're the Romans and the people, even beyond that, in the wonderful Druid tradition, and what did they call it in the Druidic tradition, uh, I mean? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I, I cannot remember the phrase for it. But basically, it was a day when, you know, the nobles dressed like peasants, when 
you, you know, would dress as the opposite gender where you would do a job you didn't normally do. But you were foolish. Yeah, yeah. so it was like, it was, you were encouraged to look foolish because it was believed that that was needed to balance out the seriousness. So you want to take your mask off? Oh, when, when the oh. so yeah. the idea, it was that, you know, because the Druids believe in balance and all things, they knew that as there were times of seriousness, there had to be times of foolishness. Times of levity. Yeah. And so times to, to go, whoa, and uh, I you know, don't have to be this strict. I don't have to be this serious all the time. I can start laughing. Uh, but at what? Well, getting dressed up as a man dressing up as a woman, or a woman mm -hmm. dressing up as a man, or, or, or a noble dressing up as a peasant. These, and they, all the different calendars and all the different peoples have had time to do that. And that was one of the things I thought kept us sane. And then it just got, got ignored this year. Well, just, there goes sanity, you know? And we <laughs> need that balance. We need to have that. So think about it. And it all started out because uh, when uh, uh, Pope Gregory trained, changed the calendar, some people f followed the new calendar and some people followed the old calendar. So we have a Gregorian calendar, we have another, we have uh, a Julian calendar, we have all these calendars. And so when it was finally established, what was the beginning of the new year? And if you didn't follow it, you were considered a fool. I, I don't even follow my calendar. I mean, uh, so that's, you know, I kind of like that. Oh, yeah, you said Tuesday, why don't we try Monday? Let's see what happens. So, and in uh, early on in Great Britain, they, when they finally changed over to the Gregorian calendar, they, st uh, they found that uh, the people that weren't following it, they could do pranks and jokes on them. Nothing real serious, but just something fun to remind them, you have to get on the board here. You have to be on the, the Gregorian calendar. And so uh, Mark Twain said, the first of April is a day we remember what we are, the other 364 <laughs> 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 And I, I think that's so true, and that, that's how it goes. Um, when I talked about whatever happened to a fool, I think of Evan Costello. We were talking about them earlier in that. Who's on first? Um, I can hear that over yes. and over. Or some uh, 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 people here, you know, I didn't dawn on me that started out in radio. Not many people around still remember radio as the only entertainment, but it was so fun to sit on the floor in front of huge Philco uh, radio and listen to Abbott and Costello, Amos and Andy, listen uh, to all of these amazing comedians that, at that point in time that were there. And what I wonder is, what is happening when all you're doing is looking at your, at your device and not hearing people being fun? So think about that as you go through the day. What do I listen to that's fun? What do I listen to that makes me laugh? When's the last time you've had a real, that guffaw, a belt, a laugh that comes all the way up from your belly? So think about that. And because there's so many things that we can do that uh, do make us feel excited about life and do make it feel fun. And uh, so walking outside in the grass barefoot makes you feel fun. Makes you feel a little foolish too, doesn't it? Uh, what do people think? Don't worry about it. I've never worried about what people thought. And somebody, <laughs> this is one of my standards. Um, we were walking down uh, Market Street during Gay Pride. I forget how many years ago, but a lot. And I was wearing a kind of a pink gauzy dress, and a breeze came around and shot my dress straight up over my head. <laughs> Now, you, you know, you would think that ordinarily people would try and pat their dress down. Oh, no, I was busy holding on my wig. You know, <laughs> I, I didn't care what they'll say, so oh, they weren't going to see my bald head. And, um, and uh, one of the people who has attended a church, David, was there that weekend in that corner at Noe and Market and saw that in front of the cafe floor, saw my dress go over my head. And he said, we talked about it for years. <laughs> it was Gay Pride weekend and they just roared about how funny that was. <laughs> Little did I know, I made history and I was delighted in it. I mean, it was like, yeah, they won't forget me. So, <laughs> think about that. 
And when you think about things that you've done and you go, oh no, but you want to get embarrassed, run a in it. If you make people laugh. I did stand up in San Francisco for about six months. I wasn't a great comedian. I wasn't a lousy one. I was the worst thing possible. I was mediocre. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, I thought, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to be a minister instead. <laughs> have joy in their life. I'm going to let the people feel feel good. Because when you're when you're not feeling foolish, when you're not being fun, you get duller and duller and duller. It's kind of like shining up anything. If you have a piece of metal, if you have a piece of jewelry, if you don't shine it, it gets dull. Well, it's the same thing with humor and people. If you don't laugh, you start getting dull. And and you wonder, why don't people want to be around me? What's happening? Look at, I mean, I have so many people around me, they bring us this food. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. No. Because what I know is whatever's happening, that being a fool, being a comedian, being ridic uh, able to be take ridicule, and, and laughing about it, is something that helps you move through the year. Helps you have a chance to meet new people. Wouldn't you rather meet new people with a smile on your face? What happens if the only time you meet people you're sad? You get a lot of people who feel sorry for you. And sometimes I hear some folks say, oh well, I want people to worry about me. Why? I would rather have people laugh with me. Then, then worry about me because their worry is not going to help my work. It's just still going to be the same thing. Okay? And so when you think about that, that every time you laugh, other people are going to laugh with you because that's just the way we are. We're geared to do that. So when you think about that, think about the person that I brought in with me today, and I'm sure a lot of you people have met this person. And here he is, and he's called the fool. <laughs> okay, have you all met him before? Oh yeah. oh yeah. He's the tarot fool. Well, why do you have a divine divination, a divination deck, which starts out with no number at all? The fool embodies everything. The fool in the tarot card says that that is the most important thing. It's for you to step out without knowing what's there and taking a chance. Doing things that make people laugh. Be able to do things that are positive. The Tarot deck represents all faith. Uh, it, it's, it, it's steeped in the religious uh, mysticism of many cultures because there was Jewish, Christian, Sufi, Hindu, Egyptian, Buddhist, Druid, a lot of other things, a lot of other groups use the tarot deck for divination. And one of the main reasons is not all the beautiful cards on the inside, it's the beginning one. The fool. Where we can learn it's okay to just step out without knowing for sure where we're going, what we're doing, or why. If we have everything so tightly bound of where we're going, and we stumble once, we fall down. When you're the fool, hey, I stumbled, so what? Think of the clowns in the circus. When they, don't they look free? We know that that's just mask and our paint. But there's a freedom that they express that we start feeling like we can be children again. We can laugh, we can giggle, we can have a great time. Because with the fool, with the clowns, with the comedians in life, you know, they're, they represent to us our innocence, our mobility, our availability our way that we can move in life to bring about fun, to bring about energy that's different. And as you think about that, I want you to think, when's the last time you looked at something that was funny? Do you watch cartoons? I'm, I'm, try watching cartoons some Saturday. Mm -hmm. Not the ones that are getting real into monsters and all that, but ones that are funny. Some of the early the Disney, whatever and start looking at the comedy that's out there. There's some really great comedies out there. 
And when you're thinking, oh yeah, but I've got to find out what the news is doing. What are you going to do to change the news? What does the news do to you? It makes you sad, worried, upset, confused, and feeling pretty intolerant about some group or another. Stop it. That's not why we're on this planet. We're on this planet to love, to create, to be energetic, and to find ways to enjoy life and help everybody else enjoy this beautiful playground that God has given us. So when you think of that, I, I got these jokes. Every one of you should have gotten a joke. The one I got that I really liked, it said, the facts of the day. The great t-shirt was created in 1904. The t-shirt was targeted to single men who couldn't sew or replace buttons. <laughs> Did you know that? Is that see? That's what happens. Chris is saying, I don't know how to sew on buttons. <laughs> He's wearing a t-shirt. But I just love that, that there was a reason for t-shirts. And it was one of those things that was very interesting to look at. And so, uh, the, another one I had is, think the price of gas is expensive. Have you seen the price of chimneys? They're going through the roof. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, those groaners, a lot of you've got some groaners in your, in your jokes, I'm sure. Because there were a lot of them with puns, uh, puns, not funds, but puns. And a lot of them that when you looked at it, you went, well, that makes you think. You know, that makes you think about something. So what I want to have it do is for you to start thinking about what in your life has been so funny you want to share it. And it could have been about love. And it could have been laughing. How I many of you remember laughing? It, it could have been the mail that you got that you thought was pretty silly. And I'm going to let you just, this is not organized at all, but let's just kind of start off with who has a funny story or a joke they'd like to read? I have a silly story. Go, Eddie, come on, stand up. Okay. Okay. Well, just years ago, you know, I was in my home and I kept hearing this high frequency buzz. I'm going, oh, maybe it's the transformer out in the hall. And it was really annoying, this kind of high, just barely could hear, but it was just annoying. So I went outside, I went up into my, to see the electrical pole coming out of my roof, tried to hear, I could still hear the buzz. Okay, I hear a buzz, okay, and then I went out, okay, but it's not there. So I went outside in the front, I could hear the buzz out in the front. So I went over to my neighbors and I said, hey, I knocked on the door and I said, can you hear that buzz? There's like some sort of buzz in the air, you know? And they said, yeah, I didn't, we don't know what that is, you know? So I got back home. You know, I'm going, I really can't locate, and it's just driving me crazy. Just this really hard, just perceptible, but annoying, right? It, you know, so then I took a look at the time on my watch, and I realized that it was louder when I put the watch, my, my <laughs> digital watch, to my, my ear. And, and it turned out that the battery was low on my watch, and it was making a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> over and asking neighbors, trying to figure out what it was. And all the time I was carrying it with <laughs> Didn't you feel a little I bit? I felt very silly. <laughs> <laughs> That's called foolish. Yeah. Foolish. yeah. yeah. So that was my little adventure. <laughs> that was my, oh my God. Yay. The whole time. <laughs> okay. Mary, did you say you had one? And Ed, is it picking this up at all? Okay. Yes, I do. It's kind of a visual one. So okay. You'll have to look. All right. So, salesman driving down the road. All of a sudden, boom, and he goes, oh dear, he gets out, and he hit a cat. A cat? A cat. And he, he goes down the road a little further, and he sees a farmhouse, and he goes, oh man. Talk a little been, bit louder. It must have been their cat. So he gets out of his car, he goes and knocks on the door, and he says, hi, um, I'm sorry, but I think I ran over and killed your cat. The, the guy there at the door says, well, what did it look like? He said. <laughs> okay, and Eileen, let's go. <laughs> well, this is in, in the spirit of embarrassing technology moments. Um, I was talking with a friend of mine who I knew back in college, and she called me Augie. 
And so we were talking and I needed to get out and, and I'm looking around and I keep saying, dang it, dang it, dang it. And she said, what's wrong? And while I'm talking, I said, I cannot find my cell phone. <laughs> there was a momentary pause and she said, Augie, you need a nap really bad. <laughs> Anybody else like to share one? Yes, Joan. When I was fairly new into metaphysics and the whole idea of aliens and space travel and alien abduction, I had strange noises in my backyard. And when I would go to sleep at night, I'd hear this vibration and I became convinced that aliens were going into my backyard and using my hose to fill their uh, spaceship. <laughs> and that it was okay. I would, I, so I talked to the aliens and told them it was okay to use my water to fill their spaceship. So a friend came over and, and asked me, and I was telling them about it. And <laughs> And this went on for weeks and weeks and months and months. And then I came to the kitchen and I moved the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, sound stopped. And what had happened was that the way the refrigerator was, it vibrated down that wall into the bedroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> so there were no space aliens Aww. in my backyard. <laughs> oh, so sorry. But, I gave a speech about that in Toastmasters and won an award. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, I, Mel, I want to thank you so much for entering. We had, we uh, all talked to Sean about leaving, and now here you showed up, and I want to thank you so much for coming in on your last day here. Thank you. Yay! Okay. Bye, Sean. Bye, Sean. Bye, Sean. Love you. Love you. Yeah. Okay, anybody? Yes. Uh, what, what, Mel? Okay. 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 <laughs> um, a local pastor joined a community service club. The members uh, and the members thought they would have a little fun with him. Under the name badge they printed for him, they, they printed for the, the title uh, as Hog Collar. <laughs> and uh, no one made a big fanfare about the badge as it was presented to him. And the pastor responded by saying, Usually, I'm called Shepherd of Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you know your people better than me. <laughs> Okay, so Rebecca and I are husband and wife, and um, she English is her second language, and I got a text message um, years ago. I was I was out in the world doing my work, and she said, "When you go to this, when you can stop at the store, please get happy food." And I thought, okay. But I got to the store, the grocery store, and okay, shoot, it's a little stressful. I, I wasn't <laughs> sure. Wait, cookies or chips, or, you know, just so I got something like that. And I took it home, and she wasn't there, but the happy food got there. <laughs> and, and then uh, later that day or the next day, I don't remember exactly how this worked, but. I got a message, we still need happy food. It's like, oh man. So I guess, I, so I was trying to think of something other than what I got. Anyway, so I brought that home and I found out that our dog's name is Happy. I wasted a lot of money. <laughs> It's sort of a similar thing. Uh, it was my first nursing job. I was in a convalescent home, and my charge 
nurse was Filipina and, and you know, first language was not English. And so I was passing medication and she asked me if I had gotten my fluvoxin. And I was like, I don't remember that medicine from all the studying that, that I was doing on my, my meds. And she asked me three or four times and I'm like, I don't know what that med is. What is it used for? Finally she said, the fluvoxin, you know, the thing, the, the shot for the flu. And I'm like, oh man, that was some medication that I didn't Jill said that she was she read a joke. Okay. Jill, you are oh, standing right now. I haven't read it all. Knock knock. Who's there? there? Tank. Tank Thank you. you. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 My dad is a software engineer. <laughs> so mom sends us to the grocery store one day when we were when I was a teen, and he never gets to go. He always messes it up. So the list said three and three quarter pounds of ground beef. He can't, he can't mess this up. It's just so simple. And I come from my room hearing just shouts and hoots because dad comes back. There's three individual three quarter packs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and mom just. silly lady and she was all, she loved jokes and everything and she came to me this morning and I haven't seen her in a long time you know and she used to come when when we did meditation she wanted to go with me on meditations and stuff so I'm like, what is she doing here today so when Sean was doing the guitar and speaking she showed up again I said why are you here and she goes because it's joke day <laughs> You know, hearing a spirit guide in my head about most of the time when I'm doing readings and that type of thing. Some of their idea of funny is amazing because it is funny, and but it's usually pithy. You know, mm -hmm. it's usually something about what's really happening, and so when you get a chance to listen to it. Okay, anybody else like to share a joke or read a joke? I've got yes, I, I, I do have something that was. It, it's not as much a joke, but as one of those signs that God is listening. Oh. And uh, when I was getting married, and the family was not quite accustomed to the idea of having a black in the family. Family, there was a lot of stress, a lot of tension. Um, you know, not it wasn't considered a happy thing right away. Wow. And so I was invited over to dinner, and I'm like, Lord, please do something to help me, to help them. You know, if you're out there and you're listening. I need help. So we have a very awkward kind of stilted dinner and then you know it's like in order to break the tension we decided it's like okay well we're gonna watch a movie together you know and everybody's tense and we all sit down turn the TV on and immediately guess who's coming to dinner coming to dinner. <laughs> and I'm like really? really? <laughs> But it turned out to be a wonderful thing. We all talked and, and it got out. But it was just like, of all the things to be playing in this moment. And once it turned on, nobody had the courage because it's like, okay, if we turn this off, we admit we have a problem. And so we all had to sit through it together. <laughs> okay, anybody else like to share a joke or read a joke? You should all have gotten a joke on your program. So at this point in time, whether you think it's funny or not, why don't you give it a try? Okay, Christine, what's your say? Uh, take a minute. I couldn't decide whether to go to Salt Lake City or Denver for vacation. So I called the airlines to get prices. Airfare to Denver is $300. 
the cherry sales person replied. And what about Salt Lake City? We have a really great rate to Salt Lake. $99, she said. But there is a stopover. Where? In Denver. <laughs> <laughs> That, uh, that does happen, I know. Okay, okay. Uh, Tim, you want to read yours? Okay. Hey, you're a, you're, you're a performer. This should be easy. You have to pull down your mask. So this knucklehead walks into a hardware store and tells the clerk, you know, I just inherited all these acres of land full of trees and I need to cut the trees down like right away. So the, so the hardware store guy advises, what you need is a chainsaw. And this is the top of the line. So he says, okay, I'll take it. So he goes home and gets to work cutting down the trees and comes back the next day like, you said this would make this job easier. It's only made it harder. So the clerk says, well, let's see what's wrong with it. And he pulls the cord. What's that noise? <laughs> <laughs> I have to go. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Mary? Maybe I, I wasn't going to share, but I... Um, I looked down at the prayer that I heard, the joke that I have been given, and it kind of ties into what I'm going to talk about next week. I thought, well, maybe this is meant to be. So here we go. This is a small town, and in this small town, there are four churches. There's a Presbyterian church, a Methodist church, a Catholic church, and a Baptist church. Interestingly, they all have a problem with squirrels. The squirrels get into the church, they run up to the, they're just squirrels everywhere. All four churches and they're trying to think, well, what are we going to do about it? So let's look at how different churches handle different things. So the uh, Presbyterian church decided that it was predestined. You know about that. <laughs> and they, so they assumed that the squirrels belonged to the church and they would just have to live with them. But it worked. It worked for them. The Methodists decided that they should deal with this and the squirrels knowingly in the style of Charles Wesley. So they humanely boxed them all up, took them to the end of town, went back to church, and the squirrels had almost beat them back there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that wasn't what he did. The Catholics, the Catholics had their own way. They said, um, we have to do this humanely, and they trapped them. And they took them to the um, to teach them the rhythm method. That's why we're all here. Um, that they are. Um, that then there won't be squirrels anymore. You know they'll uh, run out. But that didn't work. <laughs> the Baptists had the best solution of all. They voted the squirrels into their church. And then they only saw them on Christmas and Easter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mel. On that, if anybody wants to see a really funny video about squirrels in church, <laughs> uh, on YouTube you can find Mississippi Squirrel Revival. Lake <laughs> <laughs> Stevens, if anybody's familiar with oh, that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that, that sounds so great. Funny. <laughs> well, how, have any of you not laughed? If you didn't laugh at something today, then oh, excuse me. Then I think maybe you should find your life meaner and turn it up a bit, because people here were sharing. You got to get your own joke to read and think about. Start looking at the lighter side. Remember, Reader's Digest used to have a thing called the lighter side of life. So let's start looking at the lighter side. Every time something comes up and you want to go to the, oh, poor me, or poor you, or poor us, stop and say, let's look at it lighter. And you can all do that. I know you can. It's so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for laughing with me and with each other. And uh, Dr. Eileen is going to pass the basket. And when she does, turn to the back of your program and read The Sacrament of Giving.
So if you um, have, if you do not have anything physical to put into the basket, please place your hand over the basket and put in a blessing. Because you know, as we as we share either abundance or even a good thought or a good word, that comes back to us a thousandfold. Thank you so very so, much. Okay, if you check, look on the back of your program. Giving to the ministry, from which we receive our spiritual support and nurturing, is an affirmation and consciousness of the truth that spirit is the prospering power enriching every area of our lives. And next Sunday, a wonderful uh, Reverend Mary Berry is going to be here. I'm sure Tom's going to come with her. And Reverend Mary's going to be doing our Easter talk. I think this is about the fifth year in a row, isn't it, Mary, that you do Easter? But but look at the new faces. Aren't you surprised at how many new faces are here today? Uh, they, they they might want to have a, a Mary Gary rerun, you know? <laughs> and our wonderful Gabrielle, the head of I right, now give me your exact title one more time. Board president. Board president of the Village of Frank Center. Okay, and I see you brought us food. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. So I have a special announcement for next week, which is Easter. Uh, we have somebody coming who will be collecting your out-of-date medicines, whether they're over-the-counter or prescription medicines. So rather than flush them out and put them in the dumpster, um, you can bring them here next um, Sunday. They will be arriving at 12.30, so it'll be after our gathering here. And they will set up a table, so bring everything that's out of date, okay? Okay, okay great. And I'll give it to Corky to put in the newsletter. Thank you. Okay. Now, the only person we didn't hear a joke from was Corky, but I don't know if I can trust her. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was... Uh, okay, okay. So... <laughs> so I tell you what I got. I got this this joke that I that I loved when uh, when I was drinking. Well, uh, when she was drinking, joke. <laughs> okay. And so the joke goes. So the joke goes like this: Three Irishmen walk out of a bar. It could happen. <laughs> Take a nice deep breath. And dear Creator, let's all promise that there'll bring more joy, more laughter, and more positive energy into our lives next week because we know that you're a smiling, delightful being ready to help us in all of our positive endeavors. And so it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if any of you have ever wanted to read tarot and you decks are a little expensive, I've got a couple of free tarot decks up here for anybody who would want one, okay? Thank you so much. Don't forget coffee in the kitchen. Hang around for a while and there's free food that was been delivered for us from the Trader Joe's. Thank you so very much. Okay.